Hi guys, and today we are looking at um, this uh, amazing logo here, uh, Blink Bunny, which was a racehorse, um, which I find out later in the history. And yeah, this one I bought from uh, Pawn Shop uh, Cash Generators, I believe. I uh, paid £50 for it. It came with some light up Pullmans. <clears throat> um, so I've sold them on because they all kept derailing. But I kept the loco, so I do apologise, there's no box to look at this, I'm a code. But I can give you the code of the set if you're intrigued. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, it's an A3 because it's got the dome, the banjo dome there. And it's in the uh, bronze green uh, late BR livery with the lining of red. Um, so yeah, before I get into the video, <coughs> I'd like to apologise to some who might not or do like it. Uh, the history um, is a little bit extent extensive this time. It's got like the loco <coughs> and even the uh, horse it was named after. Um, so it's all there, a little bit long this time, so I do apologise. So yeah guys, so let's get on with the video. First up is the model information. Here is some information on the model. Uh, Triang and later Hornby produced a double O scale of the Flying Scotsman almost com uh, co continuously since 1960s. In 2000s, Hornby uh, also produced a live steam example, uh, reusing the chassis from the initial um, A A4 class. Other manufacturers have produced a model in other scales, such as Met Metrix in N and Locum. Um, and Bassett Loke in an O gauge. So yeah, moving on to the front, this uh, Loco has sprung metal buffers. There, there you can see it. Sprung metal buffers, so my finger. Um, it has a handrail. It has a separately applied uh, he headboard, which says uh, the Queen of Scots. It has the loco number as well, which is uh, 60051. Also has a, ch a chain link coupling down here. It has a uh, brake hose. It has a lovely red uh, buffer beam. Um, it has the shed code and it has this uh, molded smoke box dart. The shed code, I don't know what it says, um, but you will, you will now. As we move on to the side of the loco, we have this really uh, fine um, linkage down here and rods and all the rest of it really fine. We have a red line across the chassis going down to the um, cab. We also have the red and, red and black lining on top of the, of the boiler bands. We have the dome, uh, the banjo dome. We have some other stuff I'm not too sure on. We have a builder's plate here which I'm sure is legible. And then we have washout plugs here and some more handles and we have the uh, whistles and safety valves. As we move on to the cab area, as you can see we have a handle under the windows. We have glazing in the windows and the side windows. We have a handle down the side of the cab too. We have this uh, red and black lining around the 60051. We have the route availability code, I believe that is. Or it could be power classification, I'm unsure. And we have a black cab with a few rivets on. As we move on to the cab, as you can tell, there's literally nothing there. Um, if we move it closer, nothing there, just moulded. Um, unfortunately, the only texture you've got is that metal grating at the front. Well, to stop it from the uh, falling into the tender. As we move on to the front and side of the tender, as you can tell, it's a later one. It's the LNER one. Um, it also has the uh, coupling there for the tender. It has some, well, it doesn't really have much, so moulded on the front here. We have a coal chute as well. Then around the side, we have um, a handrail. We have moulded um, axle boxes. The fourth one, the furthest one towards the nearest one towards the coaches is um, swingable, on like some loco, uh, some loco stuff today. Uh, we have the uh, lining of the uh, red and black and red again uh, around the um, late crest uh, 
emblem. And the coat load is uh, fat and chunky, but it does have the motor inside, so that is why. As you move on to the back, as you can see, it doesn't have any corridors or anything to the water coaches, but what it does have is a handrail there, handrail here, and a handrail at the other side. Also has the steps, it has the spring buffers, it has a massive decoupling, and it also has a vacuum pipe too. And this buffers are metal and, and um, sprung as well. The LNER greatly classes A1s and A3s. The London and North East Railway LNER greatly classes A1s and A3s locomotive uh, represent two distinct stages in the history of the British 462 Pacific steam locomotive designed by Nigel Gretley. They were designed for mainline passenger service initially on the uh, Great Northern Railway um, until they were inaugurated in 1923 to become the LNER. Uh, which they become the standard design. The change in the class redesigned to the A3 is reflected the fitting of, to the same chassis of a higher pressure boiler with a greater superheater uh, surface and small reduction in cylinder diameter, leading to the increase in the locomotive waist, uh, weight. Eventually all A1s were rebuilt, most of the A3s but not um, number 4470 which is Great Northern. The company rebuilt was a A1 slash 1. The name of the locomotives came from various sources. The first Great Northern was named after the parent company. Others were named after high-ranking railway officials, but most were given the name of famous racehorses. One was named after the company's most famous long-distance passenger train, the Flying Scotsman. The Flying Scotsman is also the sole survivor of the class and has been preserved at the NRM at York. In fiction, in the railway series children's book by the Reverend W. Audrey, the character Gordon the Big Engine is loosely based on an A1 according to Reverend Audrey in the uh, Island of Sodor, the People, History and the Railway. Gordon was a hush-hush experiment prototype for Gresley Pacific Loco for the um, Great Northern Railway, the so-called AO. Uh, built in 1922, he was sold to the fat controller in 1923. Uh, once tested, was um, uh, complete. Following problems with his uh, conjunction valve gear, uh, George, uh, Gordon was um, rebuilt in 1939 um, on a two cylinder chassis design by the fat controller, uh, which explains why he did not. Uh, look exactly like the A1 in the books. Here is some information on the class. Uh, power type is steam. Designer, as we know, is Sir Nigel Cressley. Uh, builders is Doncaster Work 59. Uh, North British Locomotive Company 20. Built dates were 1922 to 35. Uh, total uh, produced were A1s with 52. A freeze was 51 plus 27 new ones. The wheel configuration, as we know, is a 462. They are standard gauge. The fuel type is coal. Uh, the F cylinders is free. Uh, um, the valve uh, gearing is uh, Wiltshire outside and inside greatly con conjuncted. I think that's right. Um, valve type is uh, pistons. Valves. They operated under the uh, Great Northern Railway, well, one did anyway, the London and North East Railway and uh, British Railway. The power classification under BR is a 7P and a 6F. The route availability is 9. They were withdrawn between 1959 and 66. And as we know, one is preserved, which is the Fly Scotchman, which is number 4472, and the rest are sadly scrapped. 
Here is some information on the model I just looked at. The BR number is 60051. The second grouping number is LNER51. The first grouping number is LNER2550. Its work lot number is 1606. Its name is Blink Bunny. It is an A3 class. Of, uh, designed by Gresley, it's a 462. It was built on the um, 12th or the 11th, 1924, at Doncaster Works. Um, it's 1948 shed code, it's 34A King's Cross, and then its last shed code is um, 52A Gateshead. It was withdrawn on the 23rd or the 11th, 1964, at Hughes Blockdown. Battleship Wharf. It was cut up on the 31st of the 1st, 1965. Here is some extra information on the uh, naming of the locomotive. As we know, it's Blinking Bunny. Or Blink Bunny, sorry. Um, it was born in 1854. Um, and it is a British thoroughbred racehorse and a broadmare. It's um, in its career, it lasted from 1856 uh, to 1858, and she went, uh, ran in tw uh, 20, rate, uh, 20 times and won 14, uh, which included the likes of um, the Glimpsons, the Glim Glimpler Stake, the Epson Derby, the Epson Ope, um, etc. Um, she had a, pr a premature death in 1862. And she managed to produce a uh, free top class um baby resources I forgot what they're called uh, here is some quick information on the class its snare is um Melbourne its dame is Queen Mary its sex is a mare or I think it's a female it was born in eighteen fifty four uh of the Country is a uh, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. It colour is a bay. Its breeder, owner and trainer is William Asenal. Its record is 1913 and 1 and 2. And its major wins, like I said before, is um, Park Hill Stakes, Lancashire Oaks, Epsom Oaks, Epsom Derby and Glen Crack Stakes. Uh, they were all in 50, 1856 to 57. So yeah guys, um, uh, as I started doing now, uh, you will see a clip coming up now of it going across the um, lots of points. So yeah, that was a pretty impressive for a tender loco on DC. And I normally stutter over the points. So yeah, the usual stuff now is going to um, slow speed test and we'll get it with a friend and some stock.
So yeah guys, that's the end of the video. Um, my overall opinion on the Loco itself, it's a lovely little thing. Well, it's a big thing, but it's lovely. Uh, for Tando Loco, it runs pretty well. Uh, no issues on points. Um, only issue I had really is the motor's making a squeak and it looks like it's got like, inside the motor it looks like it's butter, um, but I'm guessing it's something like wax or something, or lube. Um, you know, oil or something like that. So it needs a clean. Um, this one may not be with me much longer. It's going for sale. Uh, just because I don't need it. I don't. I don't need it anymore. I don't want it. Um, as much as a lovely loco. Uh, I got too many. I need to cut down. But who knows? So yeah, so that, that's the local it running with. It ran. It had um, some finger LMS or BR coaches, because um, just simple fact is BR there. And then on the inner line we had um, another Alinear loco, a B12. This is the old old one with the hook mechanism inside. Nothing, nothing fancy. No, nothing great. Well, nothing. You know, cost me about twenty pound. And that was running with a mix of random stock. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, please remember to um, you know like and comment. Um, mainly comment, really. So I like, like, like to see what people think, um, and also if people don't like what I do, and then at least they can tell me how to change it. Um, so yeah, that's the loco. Um, stunning. It's what. Well, uh, my fifth A3 A1, and there will be a video up at some point of all my A3s when A1's running. Um, I think it sounds good idea to me. So, yeah, guys, that's it from me, and it's goodbye from them, and it's definitely goodbye from me. So, bye, guys. <laughs>